Why does it look like that? Hey guys, it's me, Sylvia, back with another video. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are gonna be testing the best makeup that Sephora has to offer, okay? We're talking best-selling, top-rated, so many great reviews, everyone saying this is a product to buy, you need it in your life, and we're gonna see if that's true. Are these products worth the hype? Also, we're gonna play with even more makeup in today's video. We're doing my monthly BoxyCharm unboxing. So I have the January boxes. We love BoxyCharm for partnering with us for today's video, and you guys know I've been an ambassador for them for a little while now, so monthly, we do these little unboxings to see what we get in the box. It's a makeup subscription service, so every single month they send you makeup, like beauty products, beauty tools. Super worth it if you're a beauty lover, because the products in the box are always worth more than what you pay for it. So, deals, makeup, what's not to love. Without further ado, let's get into it. So for the month of January, we have both the base box and the premium box. Both are really great value. It just depends on how many products you want and how much you want to spend each month. Base box is $25 a month and you get five full-size products. Premium box is $35 a month, but you get six full-size products in there. So you get a little bit more. And it's just a great way to like discover new makeup and beauty brands. Also, not every single box is the same. So say you were getting a January box, it might not be the exact same as mine because you do a little quiz online. So they curate it kind of based on your preferences. So you're more likely to get stuff that works for you. So in the base box this month, what do you get? Oh, a tinted moisturizer from Pure Cosmetics, a retail value of $35. So right there, you're already getting a product worth more than what you actually paid for the box. Oh, it feels hydrating. Very glowy. There, it's a tinted moisturizer. And then we got a skincare product, a pharmacy's Deep Sweep 2% BHA Pore Cleaning Toner with moringa and papaya, okay. And it's perfect for my skin type. Combination oily and acne prone skin, so okay, say no more. I'm down. Then we have an eyeliner pen from Queen Studio, which is a black wax pencil. Also a liquid liner in there as well. A little two-in-one situation. Violet Voss's All of You Forever eyeshadow palette. I love Violet Voss's eyeshadow formulas but I do not have this palette. It's so pretty. So it's a mixture of mattes and shimmers in there, lots of olive tones. Look at that, okay. Okay, last product in there is a lip mask from Seraphine Botanicals. It has jojoba and rosehip oils to keep your lips chat-free, soothed and plumped at the same time. It smells like apples, it smells so good. Lips look hydrated, packaging is kind of inconvenient, but it's cute. I feel like it's aesthetically pleasing, but not very practical. I feel like that would get really messy. You know what I'm saying? Definitely getting your value in the base box. I think my favorite product is the Violet Voss one. I can see myself using that the most. Also really curious about that toner for my skin issues. Let's see what you get in the premium box. I can spot some good stuff already. Oh, is that Fenty? It's Fenty. Okay, wait, let's get in there. We have the Fenty Beauty Mascara. I literally just bought one of these, so. I played myself because now it came in the box. Then we have a clean jelly oil cleanser from Ren. It removes your makeup. I really like like balmy cleansers, oil cleansers, a jelly cleanser I haven't tried yet. I prefer those type of cleansers rather than like scrubbing with a makeup wipe. So I'm curious about the jelly consistency. So next is this. It's a silver infused microfiber makeup removing cloth. I've been wanting to make the switch from makeup wipes to a more cloth like just, you know, save the planet and all that. And also it's less harsh on my acne and everything. We've got Ofra Cosmetics Good To Go Mini Mix Palette. Ofra's highlighters are some of my favorite highlighter formulas out there. They're just so blinding and so gorgeous. Looks like you get a bronzer, blush, some eyeshadows, mini mix. There's a mix of everything. We love it. A cream eyeshadow stick from Laura Mercier. I remember seeing this on Sephora as being top rated too. So maybe we'll include this in our eye look today to see if it's worth the hype with those reviews. Oh, that swatch though. Last but not least, we have the Jet Lag Mask from Summer Fridays. Talking about hyped up products, this is something I never got around to trying. It's supposed to be really great for hydrating. So my skin has been getting hella dry in the winter. You wouldn't tell now because we're oily AF with my priming products I used. But I swear there's always one product in the box and I'm like, oh, I've been wanting that. Link will be in the description for you guys to check out BoxyCharm. It's a great way to get deals on top beauty brands. They're always giving you discounts. You can also do things like refer friends, review products and get like free products that way. So there's a lot of fun stuff for beauty lovers with BoxyCharm and I hope you guys enjoy unboxing them and seeing what we get each month as much as I do. So now let's get into reviewing some more top rated makeup. For foundation, we have Smashbox's Studio Skin 24 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation. This has 
over 3,000 reviews, almost 100K loves on Sephora. So she's supposed to be good. I already have primer on. It's supposed to be a medium to full coverage and supposed to give you a natural matte finish. We've got one full layer on. It's not full coverage. I would say no, ma'am. To be fair, these are like dark acne scars. I should have probably color corrected beforehand, but it didn't cover them. Strong medium coverage for sure. It kind of made my face feel tighter. Like it kind of has this tacky feeling to it. I kind of have a feeling that this is gonna be true to their claim of it being really long wearing. Is it a natural matte finish? Not to me. This is more of a natural to dewy finish. Very skin like, very pretty. Is it good for my oily skin? We'll give it time. First impression, let me set my face. Let me do my concealer. See what it looks like after that before we see if we agree with the good reviews or if we don't. Next we have Lancome's Ultra Wear Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. Damn, that's a mouthful. It comes in this interesting little tube. I'm gonna just squeeze some out on my hand. Oh, why is it so orange on my hand? Let's see. Oh, maybe the orange is good for color correcting. I got the second lightest shade and it has quite a bit of orange in it, but usually I just like a color corrector for that. Full coverage, seamless, a little goes a long way. I wanna give it another chance and try the lightest shade, which is just a shade up from this to see if maybe there's a different undertone. But as of right now, like I would prefer this as a color corrector. Let me turn the lighting down. And you see that it's kind of peachy, kind of orange compared to my foundation. Probably gonna exchange this for my right shade because what a waste, you know? Because I actually Actually really like the concealer. So I've done my brows, primed my lids. Now we're gonna try out the very hyped up Huda Beauty Naughty Eyeshadow Palette. So aesthetically pleasing to look at. It has these interesting marble shimmer shades, but then there's this corner shade, which kind of weirds me out a little bit. It has like metallic balls inside of some jelly. I immediately dipped my finger in it because it, it just was like too weird looking not to. And it's kind of just like this balmy berry kind of color to it. I almost wish that this was just a clear jelly, you know, if you wanted to make your eye kind of balmy. I never really do wet eye looks like that because I find they always crease on my super deep set eyes. So I could have done without this shade. Everything else looks really pretty and I'm excited about. First using Hypnotic. I'm gonna do a very light layer of this just above my crease, kind of as a transition shade. Really flicking that out kind of towards my hairline, my brow. It's a pretty shade. And then I'm gonna take the shade Flower Power, which is this marble shimmery shade. Keeping that on the same brush because I just want to do a really light shimmer across my lid. Oh, that's so stunning. Look at that. I love that. I'm getting some fallout, so let me just quickly set my concealer and set my foundation so it doesn't stick to it. The more this foundation is like settling in and drying down, I swear it's looking better and better. Now let's take Untamed. I'm gonna place that just along my outer lash line, creating kind of like a smoky wing. The pigment is there, color payoff, beautiful. There's no surprise there. Really creating a smoky outer corner. So pretty. Look at that shimmer. We're gonna deepen it up a bit by taking Spicy and just adding some depth to that smoky outer wing here. Now we're gonna go ahead and use now the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick that we got in our BoxyCharm box for this month. I'm gonna just use it to intensify my inner corner highlight. That's really pretty. Eyes are looking bomb. I'm really enjoying using that palette. I would agree with reviews. I do really like it. If only I could switch that one little weird slippery shade. I'm gonna quickly just apply some mascara, some lashes, and we carry on. So we have the Airbrush Bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury. It's a refillable bronzer. It is quite pricey. But I mean, apparently it's worth it because she's got a lot of great reviews. Okay, first of all, packaging, it's stunning. $65, like she can be a decor item at this point. The pan is basically as big as like Tom Ford bronzers. It's huge. Big mirror in there. Very slim, sleek, gorgeous. Like me. I got shade two, medium. Right above the hollows of my cheeks, I don't go as low anymore. I feel like it helps lift your face. That's kind of a new technique I'm using for my bronzer. I love this shade. This is perfect for my skin tone. I feel like it's not too orange. Very nice, it's warming up my face, I like. Definitely do have to build it though, I will say. But I feel like that's how you get the most natural, you know, well-blended look. It blends beautifully. It almost looks like a liquid bronzer with how it's like melted into the foundation so nicely. I think it's gorgeous. It blends really nicely. I love how it's like a very slow buildable formula. I like that it's matte, but it's not like too heavy or like dull looking. It's really nice. So all in all, I do agree with the reviews. I really like this bronzer. For blush, we have Shiseido's Minimalist Whipped Powder Blush in the shade Sonoya. I am very unfamiliar with this brand. <gasps> 
Oh, it's an interesting texture. They weren't lying when they said whipped. It looks weird. It looks like Play-Doh. So I think the best way to apply this is with a brush. We'll do a little bit at first. Don't wanna overdo it. Okay, I literally barely dipped my brush in there and it's already a lot. I love this shade. <gasps> I love the shade. Oh, too much, too much. Or is it not enough? This texture is so weird. It blends like a cream and it looks like a powder when it's blended out. It definitely got rid of some of the foundation on that really crusty dry acne spot, but you know those be difficult. Why did I pick it to death? A little goes a long way too. So I feel like you could have this for so long, but it is like a whipped kind of wet texture. So you wanna make sure you're Closing that up tight. <laughs> Do notice that my foundation lifted. That's annoying, but I don't know if that's at fault of the blush or the foundation, because also the foundation kind of lifted on my acne on my nose here when I was doing my nose contour. So it could be the foundation, but that I don't know. First impression, I don't know. I have a feeling it's the foundation though. So I'm really liking this blush. Next we have the highlighting powder from Bobbi Brown. Oh, it is so gorgeous. That is mesmerizing. Look at that. Wow. Anyways, I get distracted by shiny things. Oh. <gasps> oh my God. The base is like super finely milled and you know, gives you a nice reflection, but then there's these glitter specks that are really sparsely like throughout that just give you that extra oomph. Blinding, but melts right onto the skin and doesn't look super fake, you know? All right. I like it. I mean, hello. So cute. Last up, we have Nars's lipsticks. They are extremely high reviewed, five stars. And I feel like that's no surprise. I've been wearing Nars's lipsticks, but I specifically wanted to include it in this video because their new formula is much more nourishing and like hydrating feeling and a little bit shinier too. So I personally prefer it because it feels a lot more comfortable on your lips. My favorite shade from them right now, which is Belle Du Jour. It's like the perfect nude shade. It's a sheer formula as well. So let me use my KKW Beauty nude lip liner. A little bit of Belle Du Jour on top. How gorgeous is this? Come on. Can you see how shiny it is? It almost looks like I put on a lip gloss, but it's a lipstick. It's not sticky. So NARS lipsticks, definitely worth the hype. Gorgeous, gorgeous nude shade. So those are all of the top rated Sephora makeup products that we're trying out today. And I mean, look at my face. It was a success. Like, I really like how my makeup turned out. So that's a good sign. The only product that I'm still kind of on the fence about is the Smashbox foundation, because on a first impression, it's hard to really get to know a foundation, you know? At first, I was too judgmental, I feel like, saying it was a super dewy finish, because after setting it, it's actually it's like a, you know, a nice, Satin, I would say it's a, it's a satin, okay? It's not dewy, but it's not matte, it's satin. I was seeing some lifting with the blush and a little bit of the blending on my nose, but I have acne there, so you know, it's always a little finicky, but I would say that maybe that's the foundation's fault, but I need to keep trying it to, to know. It's also completely transfer proof, which I really, really like. It has that kind of sticky feeling, like it feels like it's gripped onto my skin right now, so I feel like it is long wearing, like they say. So this is still TBD, but on first impression, I actually really like it, and I feel like if you don't have as many problem areas, I can see why it's so highly reviewed, and I'm definitely gonna reach for it again. Product that most surprised me was the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. Bronzer is usually a bronzer to me, but this just melted right into my skin. It looks so natural. What other products are your favorite from Sephora that are top rated? Let me know down below and I'll try them out if I haven't yet. That's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye y'all. Bye.